All right, Tony Doherty, so you can go to a brothel in country Victoria, but you can't lift a barbell in Melbourne. Is Brett Sutton telling the truth? Look, Brett Sutton is not telling the truth, Peter. It would seem that he makes it up as he goes along. I mean, to go through the points that he made at yesterday's press conference, first of all, to say that gyms were high risk. You know, since we opened after the long lockdown last year in November, there's been 6.4 million check-ins in Victoria without one case of community transmission. There was um, six gyms listed as exposure sites uh, two weeks ago when we went into lockdown. It's now 17 days since they were listed as exposure sites, not one case of community transmission. So they're not high risk. And then significant outbreaks. He talked so, about this. Uh, go on. I'm Sorry. just saying then, where is he getting his statistics from? Where is he getting his statistics from? Well, this is interesting, Peter, because we ask him and uh, him and Alan Ching again and again, where do you get the st statistics from? Where are you, how, how do you come up with this stuff? And he talks about the international example. He talked about the 27 outbreaks from uh, cases from gyms in the last lockdown, which was not the case. There was a, a home gym where some guys, you know, basically in their garage, a little warehouse, um, were doing MMA, and they were a family group that hung out together. They didn't have memberships, they didn't have tags, didn't have contact tracing or anything like normal gyms have. It was just a group of mates mm. and, and it was spread through that, but it wasn't a commercial gym. And then when he uses the international example, it's bold enough to say, you know, even gyms overseas where people are tested before they go in, how dare he compare what Victorians have done to an overseas example of some kind of probability or some kind of maybe um, in a country that's com completely open? I mean, there's states in the US they're getting 5,000 cases a day and the gyms are open. So you can't compare that to us when we're getting three or four cases a day during a lockdown that didn't have to happen. And all we want is to be treated like other industries. I mean, why gyms? We always come back to this and ask Brett Sutton and we ask Alan Ching and say, what, why are gyms such a high-risk environment? Because they're not. You know, we special in hygiene, specialise in hygiene. We specialise in sweat. We know how to keep things clean. The members have been outstanding in every gym, not just in Victoria, but all around Australia. And there's been not one case in Australia from a gym. All right, I want to ask you about mental health. Um, it's really come into to stark contrast this week, all the statistics about young people. But we also know a lot of uh, older people, uh, you know, adults that were going to gyms when they could over the last sort of 12 to 18 months ha have coped with coming out of lockdown and trying to get some sort of normality back in their life. There's a lot of talk about mental health, but not a lot of practical mental health support in Victoria. I think exercise is key. I know the gym for a lot of people is their mental health. Isn't that an argument to reopen gyms safely? I think it's the biggest argument of all, Peter. You know, everyone knows that gyms are great for physical health, but what they do for people's mental health is immeasurable. And it's fine for Professor Sutton to say, well, just sacrifice yourselves for another week. Just run around the park or do some push-ups. Yeah. We've got a lot of disabled members here that come in their wheelchairs. We've got a girl and a guy with no arms and legs. They can't just go to the park. And we've got so many women train at the, train at the gym who, on a cold, wet night, you really want to send them to, to run around the park in the dark. I mean, some people can't exercise mm. when it's daylight, so the gym is a great, safe place. And it's such a release for people, particularly with what they're going through with these lockdowns and loss of business and loss of income and all these things. It's their safe and happy place. And to take that away from people and not even to consider it. I mean, the worst thing is all, we don't get consulted as an industry. We've not had one discussion with Professor no. Sutton. You know, we had one discussion with so, uh, Alan it... Cheng a year ago and he never got back to us. I think there's a huge army of people out there right across Victoria who, who want their gyms open. And I think that mobilising them is, you know, the, the, the political campaigner in me says mobilising them is incredibly powerful. You, you have been thrown this uh, heroin injecting room not far from your business. You built what, what you have from scratch over three decades. Would you open a business in Melbourne anymore? Look, I love Melbourne, Peter. I believe in Melbourne. I want to be one of the people that helps to get it back on its feet again to what it should be. I mean, you know, when we do the Arnold Sports Festival here in Melbourne, I bring people from, you know, 60 or 80 countries in every year. I tell everyone this is the world's most livable city. I'm the most proud Melbourneian there is. So when you say, would mm. I open a business here again? Yes, I would, but we've got to make changes and we've all got to have the courage to stand up to the government, to get the petitions going, to use the platforms we've got 
to make Melbourne great again, to clean up the streets and to stop this nonsense injecting rooms and this kind of thing. Seriously, I said it to you last time, I, was like, I don't know how they come up with this stuff. Well, you need to mobilise your army, Tony Doherty. I know you've got a lot of followers out there. I think the gym's right across the country. One of the things you don't have is a really strong association body. Maybe you need it. You're always welcome here on Credlin. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Peter, and we're working on that. Thank you very much for your time.